The second studio album from the American hip hop duo Ray Shremard, consisting of Khalif Brown, aka Sway Lee, and Akeel Brown, aka Slim Jimmy, for some reason who has an X where the first I should be because. Hey, English may be your first language, but that doesn't mean that you have to use it properly, does it? Sees the two return 18 months after the release of their critically acclaimed debut album that was as enjoyable of a listen as running razor blades over your skin and pouring salt into the lacerations. But in the professional critics' minds, they were more than willing to overlook gratuitous lyricism and terrible vocal performances simply because, well, I don't know why. Maybe something was going around in the water that day and now we've reached a point where people are willing to abandon their sanity and taste in favour of giving praise to an album simply because the instrumental sounded pretty to them. Thankfully, the UK public are not as mental as I usually portray them to be because no song has even come close to making any sort of impact on the UK charts. One song peaked at number 93 and another peaked at number 137. But in the interest of fairness and not wanting to down a bottle of drain cleaner as an alternative, I took the plunge and listened to Shrem Life 2 and I eternally regret doing so. Now I know that this review will piss people off and no doubt the slew of dissenters will be seething at that comment, but ultimately you need to at least give an album a shot because, who knows, maybe their follow up projects could turn out to be surprisingly good and squash preconceived ideas. But then you remember that this is Ray Schremer, and any chance of that happening is instantaneously demolished within the first minute of the album. Never mind that the two fail to stay on topic for the most part on most tracks, but as mentioned, the gratuitous lyrics that invoke a migraine are slathered from pillar to post. Start a party may start off in thinking that it's a party track, but ultimately winds up being a slap in the face to the listeners about fucking quote bitches and how the guys can easily steal your girl from underneath your nose. Right, is that why you two are seemingly having to pay for women in order to pay attention to you two? I'm calling bullshit straight out the gate. Look Alive is an atypical bragging rap track before once again falling into wanting to screw some random girl, throwing in lines that make no sense along with the lyric, I'ma rock you like a baby. This is someone you're simply looking to fuck. This has gone down a road that has all sorts of implications that I'm not even going to entertain anymore. Black Beetle sees the two laughably trying to compare their success and notoriety to that of the British rock group The Beatles. And look, I'm not a fan of The Beatles by any stretch of the imagination, but I recognise delusion when I see it. It. Can we get the straight jackets for these two? Do Yoga sees the two getting high whilst proclaiming that all their girls do yoga, implying that this makes sex all the better because of it. Adding a sweet little lyric about coming all over them whilst one of the guys are getting their ball sacks stretched. Lovely. Or how about the track Set the Roof, where the two babble on, bragging about their hedonism and stealing your girlfriend from you, only to wind up going off about a waitress who messed up an order and their response is to force this girl to deep throat them and see if she chokes as a result. And that's just scratching the surface. You want to know something that makes this album all the more laughable? On the same project, where the guys are portraying all this bravado about parading all these quote bitches, they actually try to pull for some sort of sympathy and show that they're humble and that they have feelings too. And whilst Came A Long Way may come the closest to doing so and is by default probably the most palatable track on this album, the other areas where they try and pull this shtick is outright insulting to the listener. Am I supposed to seriously believe that crap that they try and pull on songs like Now That I Know, where the guys blow off an X flame for a bunch of what I can only assume are prostitutes and are now having second thoughts, or what about the track Take It or Leave It, where they proposition a girl of their affection that they'll remain loyal to her if only she agrees to put up with their hedonistic lifestyle choices. Once again, I'm calling bullshit on this one. I'm not even looking too deep into these lyrics as well, I'm literally quoting these songs as I see them. So, Let's play devil's advocate on this one. Let's take the viewpoint of a person who doesn't give a shit about the lyrics against everything that's applicable to human decency and let's centre on the instrumentation. How does that hold up? Well, let's put it this way. Many outlets have branded many of these tracks as bangers. And I don't know about you, but when I envisage bangers, I have in my mind the bass heavy, powerful, driving instrumentations that were every crunk song that came out during the mid 2000s. And I'm sorry, but there's very little of what I'd consider crunk on this album. If it were labelled as trap music then fine because there's plenty of that on this project but that's about it. Almost none of these tracks have a bass line to anchor the tracks or give them any heaviness. The only song that even comes close to being crunk and a banger would be Set the Roof but Little John's guest appearance is completely wasted
did, he sounds like he's given a tenth of what he usually brings to a track, and the overall presentation of the song is too thin in order for me to give it any sort of endorsement whatsoever. Everything else for the majority is trap music, and there are some moments that I will admit I do kind of enjoy. Starter Party has a neat industrial grind going on, but the poor vocal performances and constant beeping in the chorus leaves a hollow feeling throughout. Real Chill has this woozy synth in the background that isn't too bad, and it's the same story on By Chance, and I kind of like the off-kilter piano looped throughout the track, which if carried on or expanded thoroughly, would have worked well with the drunken aura that this song emits. The washed out steel drum sounds with the brief sharp synth string stings that aren't too terrible on Take It or Leave It, Came A Long Way uses a decent combination of trap hi-hats, a piano looped in the undercurrent of the song gives it a nice flow, and there's a decent little electric guitar-like melody that's just noticeable, and I'll give Shake It Fast a shred of credit for having a decent beat to it, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. But this is only acceptable after you're able to get past the vocal performances which ranges from high-pitched squeaking, primarily from Sway Lee, and it becomes incredibly irritating. All the multitude of auto-tune or pitch shift in that, whilst it's not on the same level as the latter, it still grates on the nerves of anyone who has functioning ears. And do you know what the most ironic thing is? I'm not even that mad. Yes, the lyrics are gratuitous, vulgar, and degrading to all members of the female gender, and have little to no merit at all. The instrumentation is chintzy as all hell, and to even make the claim that these are bangers are laughable. The vocal performances are for the most part unlistable, and the guest features don't exactly bump the song's scores up all that much either. Ironic that the guests appearing on this album from the majority have as much peel and quality as these two. But overall, this album winds up being above all else pathetic and laughable. I've noted time and time again about how demeaning this is to women, and whilst my previous statement may seem detrimental, ultimately, if anyone out there is even dumb enough of an amoeba to buy these two as anything other than frat boy wannabe tough guys with prowess that's enough to get any female to come crawling to them on hands and knees, then I hope someone buries you alive. And to those who choose to ignore the lyrics over beats, consider this. How far do these two have to go in terms of their gratuitousness in order for you to wake up and say, no, enough is enough. Where do you draw the line? Because if this album isn't anywhere near clear for you to call these two out, then I can only imagine what Shrem Life 3 is going to sound like. Fuck this album and fuck any defense anyone has for this waste of existence. Overall, I score this album a 35 out of 100, and even that is being generous.